Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital News YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. At Brooklyn and Chase's, it's a new day. Chase has to meet his family moment and support him as his father's will will be read. He also wants to make sure he doesn't reach for another drink. Chase knows this is not how they should be spending their honeymoon. Brooklyn said as they'll get to Italy one day, and what's important now is being there for Finn and their family. Finn stops by Alex's place. They clinch, and she's sad she missed the marriage. Finn tells her it was imperfect, but it was close. There was a moment he allowed. His painter wouldn't be suitable to finish, but Tracy and Violet got him back on track. Alexis cries. She's so glad Gregory's last day was beautiful, and they embrace again. Finn tells her how it happened, the events of the day, and that he drank a third of a bottle of bourbon. Alexis is not shocked as he slipped the night ahead, and he woke up to a woeful loss, so he had a reason to break his sobriety. He says it does not excuse what he did. Alexis says she's learned that defenses do not amount to important, he knows she suffered a loss, too. She admits she wanted to drink, but she didn't. She thinks it might be a two-a-day meeting kind of thing for them for a while. He agrees. He was at a meeting this morning, and he wouldn't drink again. She says, for now. Alexis tells him to always flash back that they've each other. Diane stops by latterly. She says she's sorry about Gregory. Alexis explains she called him last night and set up out about him from Chase. Alexis asks if there's anything from the Court of Praetors. Diane says not yet, but they made a strong case that her disbarment wasn't about the law, but Ava and Fergus need for vengeance. She plans to file an importunity charge against him latterly moment. Alexis tells her about her run heft with Fergus and how she thinks this is about his guilt from being disgruntled from both his sisters when they failed. She doesn't know why his guilt is aimed at her when Harmony killed his sisters. Diane has an appointment with Finn about Gregory's will, and Alexis is glad he retained her despite what happened with Finn and the sanitarium action. Diane notes Alexis is mentioned in the will, so would she like to attend? Alexis has a meeting with Ava to give her hell, and she formerly knows Gregory wanted her to be the erudite factor of his will. She really wished she had gone to the marriage to be with Gregory in what was his last happy moments. At the sanitarium, Finn finds Liz in the break room. He apologizes for how he treated her and wishes he'd the words to say how sorry he is. He says Chase talked him through the night and he's going to meetings. Liz thanks him for saying what he did and she was then trying to take charge of him, but she had to put Violet first. Finn understands. Liz is glad, as he didn't feel to understand history. Liz says Violet has always been his first concern, but history, he acted like she was commodity that belonged to him that she couldn't take. She's no way seen that side of him ahead, and she no way allowed. He was able at it. Finn promises she'll no way see that side of him again and thanks her for looking out for Violet. He gets a textbook, chases then, and they're meeting Diane in his office to read his father's will. Chase and Finn meet in his office. Finn tells his family he went to a meeting this morning, and Chase is glad. He trusts him to take care of himself and Violet. Diane arrives to read the will, and in it, Gregory names Chase the factor. Chase is a little shocked. She goes on to say that Alexis will be his erudite factor. He wants his sons to resolve his estate except his library, which goes to Violet. He also asks to be cremated and have his ashes scattered near his favorite tree in the Dimison. He wants them to concentrate on life, not death or a hole in the ground. Chase and Finn agree to carry out his last wishes. Latterly, Liz checks in on Finn, who's catching up on paperwork. She asks about the will, and he tells her his pater wants an open-air keepsake service rather of a burial. Liz says that sounds beautiful and asks when his coming meeting is. He says in an hour. 
Liz offers to pick up Violet from Academy. Finn thanks her. Chase returns home and tells Brooklyn about the will. He says he was named Factor, which he allowed would go to Finn. But perhaps his pater didn't want Finn floundering indeed more. He says he has to carry out his father's wishes and get Finn and Violet through it all. Brooklyn jokes that it's so awful that he doesn't have anyone by his side to get him through this. into and Nina's office as she's working with Maxie on the deception advertisements. Featuring Blaze. Ava tells Nina that she broke their deal and she didn't put her artists in the magazine. Nina says she'll publish her artists in the coming issue. She says she had to make space for a piece on Willow's new job. Alva scoffs that Willow doesn't indeed talk to her. Nina says she doesn't know what goes on in her life presently, not with her son or the new man she's seeing. Nina tells her to run back and report to Sonny. Alva storms out, but not before telling Nina it's pathetic that all she has left is to be the Queen of Crimson. Maxie tells Nina that was nuts and asks why she didn't bet on Ava, who's dangerous. Nina rants about Ava pecking her in the reverse with Sonny. Maxie asks if she regrets sealing the Metro Court or subscribing the divorce papers. Nina doesn't it, so Maxie asks why she's making Ava her adversary. Nina says Ava made an adversary of her first, and that Mo on her face was worth what she said to her. Nina continues to rant about Ava, Maxie says this meeting was supposed to be about the advertisements, but easily, Nina needs to get this out of her system. Maxie brings up the gentleman friend she mentioned and reminds her that Drew is her master and they didn't like each other, so is the coitus really that good? Nina says this is not about the coitus, and because of Drew, she's on better terms with Willow. Maxie asks what happens if temptation strikes again. Nina says Drew Kane is the contrary of what she'd call infectious. Maxie asks why also can she repel him. Joss meets Trina at the gallery. Joss allowed. She had the day off. Trina does, and she explains Ava just said she demanded her to open up as she had a meeting at Crimson. They bandy chancing an apartment, and Joss wants one near PCU. Trina is not sure she's going back yet, but she knows she's done with dorm life. Talk turns to the marriage, and Joss says it was beautiful until Sonny attacked Dex at the event. Joss tells her that she had to take Dex to the ER, and he demanded aches. She says it could have been worse if Jason didn't pull Sonny off him. Alva walks in and tells Joss that she should not be spreading gossip. Joss says it's not gossip. She was there, as was Christina, who saw it too, and is devastated. Ava says Christina is largely emotional now that she's in her third trimester, and it seems like everything escalated thanks to Jason. Joss defends Jason, and Trina weigh in and says this discussion isn't going anywhere and she and Joss should go. Joss tells Trina she's right, and Ava doesn't know what happened as she was invited to the marriage, and she can't sound why. Laterally, Alexis stops in and says she met an old friend of Ava's in Albany, Fergus Byrne, the man she hired to get her disbarred. Ava wonders how he's doing, as suppositions he must be having a good day. Alexis asks why she remained anonymous, as she'd allowed. She'd be thrilled to be the given cause of her life and career exploding. Ava tells Alexis she's responsible for that. Alexis asks why she did this. Ava says she destroyed Julian. She used his love for her to manipulate him over and over. Alexis points out Julian did his fair share of manipulating her. Ava asks if she's really still condemning Julian for everything that happened to her. Alexis says she's not. She's condemning Ava for getting her disbarred. Ava gloats. Did I call the bar? Yeah. Did I tell them you committed perjury? Yeah. Ava tells Alexis she has only herself to condemn as everything she told a bar was true. Alexis calls her cruel, and she operates in only two ways, condemning everyone differently or lashing out and causing damage. Alexis misses rehearsing law and executing people like her. She warns her license or not, Ava will limit making that complaint to the bar. She walks out, 
Leaving Abba to consider the trouble, Drew stops by the gate house to run commodity by Michael. Will explains he's taking Wiley to Academy and should be back soon. Drew also wants to run commodity by her but needs her to promise not to tell the rest of the quarter mains. He tells her about the Solon's offer for him to run for a seat, and she thinks he'd be perfect for the job. Drew explains this would be a huge change, and would he indeed have a shot at winning? Willow thinks the government needs people like him, people who go out of their way to help people. She really hopes he'll do this, and she wouldn't say anything to anyone. Drew admits the more he thinks about it, the more he likes the idea. Still, the crusade could dirty seeing he was just in captivity. Thanks for watching if you liked this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.